Hey guys, it's Original Gamer Stevie Stroh, and before I get started, and I know the shirt's wrinkly, it just came in the mail today, but I just wanted to show off the brand new I'm a Coconut t-shirt. This is the new shirt that has the cocoa from the Programming and Basic book. It's a very cool shirt. Um, can also be made into a coffee mug, which I just got today as well in the mail. I'm a Coconut. Or if you want to see the actual cocoa, you can get the I'm a Coconut shirt with the color computer three and monitor and whole nine yards so yeah so the coco merchandise has arrived today just in time for coco fest i'll be bringing these to coco fest to show off and so everybody can see what this merchandise looks like which is available on my retro swag shop you can go to my website which is ogstevystro.com and get yourself a copy today and there's also free shipping um, between april 13th and april 23rd Free shipping if you use the offer code FS417. So now that I've done that shameless plug and I've shown off this shirt, which I just think is freaking awesome. I just think this shirt is freaking awesome. I'm a coconut. I'm sorry. I'm genuinely um, thrilled about this shirt. So we're back in programming in basic and we're in chapter 19. And we're going to go over the circle command. Chapter 19 is called going in circles. So now we're going to learn about a command that can allow you to draw circles on your screen. And to make my life easy, I've gone back to using VCC, using a real PC keyboard, which is just easier to type on. Um, so here we go, chapter 19, going in circles. Does all this talk about screen and P mode and P clear have you going in circles? If so, you haven't seen anything yet, for example, you can create a full circle or ellipse or partial circle or ellipse using a single statement. Circle. Here is the syntax of circle. And there's a bunch of options to it. So you start off by circle H comma V. H is the horizontal position. V is the vertical. Then you have R, which is the radius. How big around? Is it going to be a little circle? Is it going to be a big circle? Okay. Then you have um, uh, R is a radius. C is any available color. If you omit um, C, it will use the foreground color. HW is the height to width ratio from 0 to 255. Um, height to width ratio should be 1 if you want height and width to be equal. If you want things to be taller or wider, you would change the height to width ratio. Um, so that's the height to width ratio. Then we have the starting point, which is zero or one. Um, and then you have an ending point, which is zero or one. The start point is equal to this. If, if the start point is equal to the end point, or you omit the both, the computer draws a complete, um, ellipse. I'm not quite sure I follow what that means, but I'm sure we'll figure all this crap out as we go through it here. So to draw a circle, you need only the center point h and v in the radius which is the distance from the center point so it says bring up your lines program and i don't know if i called mine lines on my old floppy or if it was called x load x all right so when i load up my x program this is my x program so pmo1 pcls p screen one whatever okay that's the one now um, as we scroll down here, it says your program should read P mode 1 PCLS screen. Um, but now it's saying delete line 25, which draws one of the lines. Um, and then change line 30 as follows. So we're going to get rid of line 25, <coughs> which draws one line. And then we're going to change line 30 to draw the circle. But let's just do what they ask us to do for now. Let's get rid of 25 and let's go to line 30. In line 30, we're going to type in circle 128 comma 96, which is dead center in the screen, 128 over, 96 down, and a radius of 95, which is probably about 50% of the screen. It says run the program. Your uh, TV should show a somewhat scruffy orange circle on a buff background. If you're wondering why the circle isn't truly round, look at line 5 and you'll see that your computer is in P mode 1, which is medium resolution. So it says change it to P mode 4, which is in high resolution. So if we list out our program, we go to line 5 and we say P mode 4, comma 1, 
I'm going to include the comma, and we run it. And now it looks better. And if I hit F6 to turn off artifacting, now it looks better. Now we've got the smaller pixels, and it's a smoother looking circle. It's not perfect, perfect, because this, even this highest resolution is not super high by, by today's standards for sure. Um, but we just drew a circle by going over um, 128 points across, 96 points down, and a radius of 95, which pretty much filled in the entire screen. That's what the circle command does. Now it says do it yourself program 19.1. Using the program above, generate a bullseye. You can do this one of two ways. Add a separate program line for each concentric circle, but use a common center, or you could use a for next loop. Okay, I think I understand what it's saying right now. So right now we have made the circle a radius of 95. Um, and it's saying we could do it as a bullseye and we can do it in a for next loop. So we need to start off with a smaller number and make our way out to the number of 95. So we could do something like this, 25 for radius um, equals five to 95 step 15. Um, edit line 30, extend that to the end, change this to R, uh, R, okay, and then 35, next R. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so that has definitely done it, but it's, I probably need to skip a few more for a bullseye, but you kind of get the idea there, right? So what I did here is I did a for next loop, and um, I started on 5 and I worked my way out to 95. I could probably, um, I could probably edit, uh, edit 25 and uh, insert a 1 here. Shift up arrow, get out of here. And then um, do like maybe a step 25. Let's run it this way. That's kind of cool. That looks a little bit more like a bullseye. There's, there's uh, in a, an entire dartboard, right? So there's less concentric circles here. So I basically started off at a center radius and I did a four next loop that increased the radius and I did it by a step of 25. So each one was a magnitude of 25 larger than the last one. So that's kind of cool. So that was DIY. Um, so let's save this one as um, DIY 19-1. All right. Now, we have a do-it-yourself program, 19-2. Do you still have the program with the house you built? How about, how do you expect to get into the house without a doorknob? Use the circle to put a doorknob on the front door. Your graphic screen worksheet is helpful. Note, if you use medium to low resolution, a circle small enough to serve as a doorknob does not have much detail. Run the program in mode four for more detail. So. If I do a dir, um, I do have my house program it's still on here. And this is the funny thing though. It says, do you still have the program for the house you built? If you were following this book in order and you never used this computer before, you'd have no idea how to save your house program because we haven't gotten to the chapter on how to save the cassette and this is not the manual for disk extended color basic because we you know <laughs> that's a whole nother book that comes with your floppy drive when you buy that so it's interesting that they're asking us if we still have it if we didn't have it you'd have to go back to that chapter and type it in again but i've been saving these so when i list my house program um which i don't even remember everything that i did um so if I list 0 through 50, all right, P mode 1, comma 1. Let me just run the program and see what it was like. All right, so that was my program. Um, and my door is rather small. Uh, I made my house rather small, too. So if I change line 20, uh, so what was it? List 0 through 50. OK, so in line 5, I'm going to say P mode 4, comma 1. When I run this right now, you can see we're in a higher resolution. I think I would need to make my door bigger um, to know where I was, but um, 
I don't even remember where all the coordinates were for this program to draw our doorknob. So let me look and see if I can see where some of this stuff was. Okay, draw left half of roof, draw right half of roof, draw left window, uh, draw a purple door, color seven comma five, line C, center X minus five, center Y plus 20, center X plus five, center Y plus 40. All right, so I'm gonna do like a line 200 and I'm gonna guess where this is. So I'm gonna say center X, um, now I, I, I wanna be I wanna be over so we went off in five in each direction. So I'm gonna say center x plus plus two and then a comma center y plus thirty. I'm not gonna make this comma the radius is gonna be two and the color is gonna be zero, which is black. Let's see how this works out here. Boom, how lucky did I get on where to put that circle? So I put a little tiny circle, which is now the doorknob on this door. Um, <laughs> that is, is pretty crazy that I was able to figure that out. My freaking cat is whining for attention right now. Hello, cat. Do you need attention, cat? Do you want to be in the video? Say hello to everybody, Mr. Gizmo Man. This is my cat, Mr. Gizmo Man. And he is very much needing attention right now. This is the Coco Cat Gizmo Man. Hello, Gizmo. How are you? Do you like my new t-shirt, Gizmo? Let me set you down in my lap here, right here. I'm a Coco Nut, everybody. Um, so there we go. That was DIY 19-2. So let's end our program. Let's save that as DIY 19-2. Um, that is actually pretty cool that I was able to kind of remember what I did and do that math in my head. All right, so coloring the circle. After you decide on the circle's radius, choose its color using two color mode. You haven't got much choice, but using four color mode, P modes one or three, you can find the color option an exciting feature. So your program should read this. Which program was this? I don't <laughs> remember doing this freaking um, okay, that was the circle program, but I don't remember if I saved the circle program, so we're gonna have to just start the heck over. Um, so let's do P mode, one comma one, ten PCLS, twenty screen, one comma one, thirty circle, one twenty eight comma ninety six comma ninety five, but it's asking me to change line thirty to a radius of thirty, and then a color of six. And then I think 40 is just go to 40. So let's run that right now. So right now I've made a smaller circle and I've chosen color six, which is the cyan color. So, okay, so that's kind of cool. So you can now specify radius, which is size and color. Uh, and in a four color mode, you have up to four colors. One of them is the background color and you have three other colors. Um, and so it is, it is easy, in fact, you can change the circle's color to any of the available colors. Now maybe we'll learn what it means to be an ellipse or the height to width ratio. Um, did you ever take a hula hoop, a bicycle tire, or buggy wheel and squeeze it with both hands to form an ellipse? Similarly, you can change the circle on your screen into an ellipse by using the height to width ratio option. So it says note, notice that your circle statement does not include the color code. Omitting the code tells the computer to use the foreground color. You must include the comma though to include the, to indicate to the computer that you are um, omitting the C and that uh, the number specifies the height to width ratio. So it says the width of the ellipse is equal to the radius. The height is determined by HW. If HW is 1, the computer draws a circle. If HW is greater than 1, it draws an ellipse that is higher than it is wide. If HW is less than 1, it draws an ellipse that is wider than it is high. Okay, so in this situation here, if we do line 30 and we say circle 128 comma 96 comma 30 comma comma 1 
let's run this and see what happens. That's still the same circle. So we did comma, comma, one. So the first comma after the 30 was the color. The second comma is the height to width ratio. And so one is a perfect circle. So it's saying that if you make the number one or greater than one, it's going to go taller. If you make it less than one, it's going to go wider. So if we test this theory now and we edit 30 and we extend to the end and we change that one to a three, like it's asking us to do here, and then we run our program. Okay, so by making the number bigger, it's going taller. If we made it smaller, meaning less than zero, it would go wider. So I've just made a taller circle. That looks like a hula hoop or a portal or something like that. So now it's saying, well, why don't you try to make it a 0.25, which is less than one. Okay. So if we edit 30, we extend to the end and we do 0.25. And now when we run it, now we've made a smaller flat circle. Um, so 0.25 is less than one. If I did 0.5, that would probably be um, edit 30. So if I did like a 0.50, that would probably be twice as tall. Yes, 0.75 would be even taller. And then 1.0 would be even better. So that is actually pretty cool. Um, now, what is it asking me to do here? It says the uh, height width equals zero, then the ellipse becomes infinity wider than it is high. In other words, <clears throat> it becomes a horizontal line. So it says change line 30 to zero. So if I edit 30 and I extend to the end and I just say comma, comma, zero, and I run it, yeah, it's a flat line. That's interesting. Um, I think we can do some four next loops here and show the circles um, stretching in different directions. That might be kind of cool. Uh, so now it says try changing it from a zero to edit 30, extend, and make it a 100. When I do it as a 100, wow, that's almost like a rectangle. That was so tall that it's just probably off the screen right now. So it's a very unattractive rectangle. That's wild. Now, from start to finish, suppose you want to draw only part of an ellipse, which is known as an arc. <clears throat> to do this, you must list the, ellips the, the, the ellipse's center point, its radius, its height to width ratio. If you wish, you may also proceed it with a color, but to draw an arc, you must specify height width. For a normal arc, use height width one, from the above information, the computer knows the location, width, and height of the ellipse. Now you can tell it how much of the ellipse to draw. To do this, you specify the start of the arc, 0 to 1, and the end of the arc, 0 to 1. Following the chart below, keeping in mind the computer always draws clockwise. So 0 is on the right-hand side. 0.25 is here. 0 0.50 is here. 0 0.75 is there. Um, suppose the example, suppose that you want to draw an arc this way from 0.25 to 0.75. Um, this is getting pretty crazy. So uh, I'm, I'm barely keeping up with the way it's asking me to do this. So if I edit line 30, I go to the end. So it's 30. All right, so now we're going to say 30 comma 1, which is now the color, comma 0.25 which is the starting point, which is on the bottom, comma, 0.75, which is the ending point, which is on the top. So this is going to draw that left half of the circle. Let's run that. OK, but the color is wrong. Um, did, did I read that wrong? It told me to do it as a 1. Um, and the one is a color I can't see now. It says 30 comma one. It says, is this your line 30? Um, now change it to this, but I, I'm thinking the color's off. So I need to edit line 30. 
Okay, so let's just change it back to 6, which is a color that we can see. Okay. All right, so that didn't exactly work. That's not the picture that I was expecting. So what am I doing wrong here? Um, it's saying to, this is what it wants me to do, 30 comma 1 comma 0.25 comma 0.75. But that comma 1 didn't work. I'm just going to try typing the whole thing again. 128 comma 96 comma 30 comma 1 comma 0.25 comma 0.75. When I run that, I don't see anything. Uh, something is not right here. Now when I go back and I look at how they originally explained the circle command, here is the format for the circle command. The circle command is h comma v comma r radius. So that's the problem right there. That comma I think I'm missing something. Uh, or I, I'm either that or it's just a terrible typo in the book because it's asking me to do it as a um, what am I misreading here I don't know and I lost where I was going uh, 0.25 circle 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 from start to finish 30 um, if so use this statement here so the first number would be the okay so the 30 is the radius so then the one is what? The one becomes the, okay, radius comma color comma um, height width ratio comma start comma end. So we're missing something here in the, um, in the command. So when, we, when we're asking us to do this, unless there's commas here that I can't see, so there's, we're missing some commas. We're definitely missing some commas. We're missing something in line 30. So 30 should say circle 128 comma 96 comma 30. Then we have the color, and I'll do a color of six. Right, let's, do, let's do a color of eight. Then we have our height to width ratio, which should be one. Then we have our um, starting point and our ending point. Let's run that. Okay, that drew the left circle. So there's something missing here in the text. The way they have it printed here, there's not enough in the command to make this work properly because we were missing um, some commas to get to the right parts where we were specifying the height to width ratio. So we've now done that. So we've now got this to where I've drawn the left circle like it asked me to do, which is starting on 0.25 and ending on 0.75. And so now to do it in the other way, in the other direction, we would start on 0.75 and we would end on 0.25. Sorry about that. It just something didn't look right. Something wasn't working right. Um, edit 30, we're going to extend to the end. So we're going to start at 0.75 and we're going to end at 0.25. Now when we run it, we are the other circle. So we can make circles perfectly round, we can make circles tall, we can make circles wide, we can make partial circles. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I don't think I ever got this fancy with the circle command. I think I probably just did normal circles to draw planets in a background and maybe did a squish circle on the bottom to look like a planet on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> I don't think I got really that crazy as a kid with partial circles and stuff, but it's kind of neat. Now. Do-it-yourself program 19-3. Has night fallen on the house you built? If so, you might want to shed some light on the subject by putting a crescent moon in the corner. This requires two intersecting arcs and some trial and error. I'm going to skip that one. <laughs> um, Do-it-yourself program 19-4. Maybe it's cold as well as dark around your house. If so, build a fire in the fireplace and show smoke coming out of the sick, out of the chimney using the circles to um, make your smoke. I'm going to pass on those two, but I do have some interesting ideas that are going to be... Um, uh, a way we can add on to our original graphics program. So what we've just done now is we've just done chapter 19 which is dealing with circles. So um, let me end 
this program here. Uh, that program's not really worth saving, but let me look back at when my original programs was, which was our graphics demo. Let's go ahead and load up our graphics demo right now. And we're gonna add circles to it. All right, so if I list zero through, uh, oh, actually what I wanna do is I wanna load, um, uh, load G demo 1.0. All right, and I wanna list um, zero through 90 right now. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna edit line 20, and I wanna change to 1.0. 1.1. I'm going to go to graphics demo. Version 1. Point, hit C to change 1.1. Okay, so the first thing I've done there is I've just um, I have just I have just changed the version. Now I seem to recall I had six subroutines that went from 1,000 to 6,000. So now we're going to do a um, now we're going to do a line 7,000, which is going to draw a circle. So, 7,000, rem, draw circle. Okay, 7010, we're going to say circle, uh, x1, comma, y1, comma, for the radius, we'll do y2. I don't know what y2 is going to be. For the color, we're going to do foreground color. Um, and for now, we're going to just do normal circles. And so 70, 20, we're going to return. We could get fancier and we could do more kinds of circles and we could add different things to the circle. But I want to list through my program again. So if I do 0 through 99 right now, this was the 0 through 99 um, did the title screen. So now if I list 100 through 199, line 100 through 199, um, uh, is the main loop that picks all the random things and then somewhere in here I did a graphics decision where is graphics decision graphics decision equals random 10 and so right now and then I also realized after I did this that I had all these if this equals that then go sub and I could have done an on go sub so right now let's edit 130 and because we've only got seven routines right now, I'm going to hit delete, hit change, and hit seven. Okay, now let's list 130 through 199 uh, through 299. Okay, so I'm going to delete 140 through 190, and then I'm going to basically say now 140 on um, graphics decision on GD, go sub 1000, comma 2000 comma 3,000, comma 4,000, comma 5,000. Now, I think what I also want to do is let's add a let's add an option eight to um, to clear the screen. But I don't remember if I picked random P modes right now. Let's just try this right now and see how this works. Okay, here's my graphics demo 1.1 UL error in line 140. Okay. Um, 6,000 returns, 7,000 returns. Um, list 100 through 199. You un, uh, 140 on GD, go sub. Ah, I, I forgot to add the 6,000. Okay, uh, 140. Extend comma 6,000. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, graphics demo. What the hell is going on here? 140 through 199. What am I doing wrong here? On GD, go sub 1,000, comma 2,000, comma 3,000, comma 4,000, 5,000, comma 6,000. Uh, is there a 7,000? There is, comma 7,000. All right, there's my seven options. All right, graphics demo version one. <laughs> what the frick? Okay, print GD. GD equals four. Okay, list 1,000 through 199. Okay, that returns. List 2,000 through 299. That's there and that returns. List 3,000 through 399. That's there and that returns. List 4,000 through 499. That's there and that returns. 5,000 through 599. Uh, that's there. List 6,000 through 6999. That's there. List 7,000 through 7999. 
that's there, that draws a circle, that returns. List 100 through 199. Okay. GD equals random 7. On GD, go sub 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000. List um, 140 through 299. Uh, 200 says go back to 100. What is my freaking error right now? On GD, go sub 1,000, comma 2,000, comma 3,000, comma 4,000, comma 5. Okay. Print GD. GD is equals 4. It's trying to go sub. Uh, oh, you know what I did? Okay. Edit 140. I see what's going on here. The 4 only has two zeros and it needs to be 4,000. It's trying to, it's telling it to go sub 400. I need to insert a zero there. Shift up arrow, get out of insert mode, get out of there, boom. Okay, and that really should have clued me into what the error was too, because it was on, um, because it was on four. Okay, so what's happening now is my graphics demo is now going through seven different options, and those options are um, changing graphics modes, um, drawing either a P set, drawing a line, drawing a box, filling a box or drawing a circle. That's all I've added right now. Um, I'm even thinking that we might want to do like a P clear and then change the P modes and then maybe every now and then do a P CLS to clear the screen. Um, but we are getting different boxes and lines and I did simplify the program to saying instead of saying if x equals 1 then go sub 1000 if x equals 2 go to sub as soon as I finished that program and finished that video I realized I should have used an on go sub Curtis Boyle also pointed that out too uh, so yeah so we've learned chapter 19 we've learned how to draw a circle what are the deals to drawing a circle? You specify an X coordinate, you specify a Y coordinate, you specify a radius. How round do I want it to be? You specify a color. You can specify a height to width ratio. If the number is greater than one, it will be taller. If it's less than one, it will be wider. You can also specify a starting point, which are like the numbers on the clock. Point 25 is like three o'clock. 0.50 is like 6 o'clock, 0.75 is like 9 o'clock, and um, 0 is, uh, is is high noon. So it's kind of like going around a clock and it goes clockwise. So you can draw um, arcs, which are pieces of a circle. So it's going to be kind of interesting to play around with that. I'll think of some other special, like, um, I'll, I'll figure out another do-it-yourself program to illustrate the concepts of stretching a circle, making a circle taller, making a circle bigger, making a circle smaller, and making a circle go around like a clock. So I'll come up with some exercises to put all of those into play, but um, my brain's too shot to do that, so maybe tomorrow. But in the meantime, what we did do is we went ahead and we added the commands to our graphics demo, which by the way, I need to save now. I need to make sure I save this as gdemo. Um, G F X uh, or this G demo, G demo uh, one one, right? So graphics demo one point one because we have added onto this program as we learn more commands, we'll add onto the demo and this demo will keep doing more things. So right now the demo is switching between text screen modes, graphic screen modes, graphics resolution modes between low resolution, medium resolution, high color two color mode, four color modes, we're drawing pixels, we're drawing lines, we're drawing boxes, we're filling boxes, and we're drawing circles. So that's what we're doing so far. As we learn more commands like the paint command and other things like that, we will add those into the mix as well and this graphics demo will get more and more interesting over time. Very cool, very cool. That was fun. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. Alright guys, chapter 19 is done. Original Gamer Stevie Stro. I'm a coconut. Are you a coconut? You might want to head over to my website, grab yourself a very cool I'm a coconut t-shirt or an I'm a coconut coffee mug for all I know. I don't know. I like it. I think it's cool. So guys, thank you so much for watching this series. The um, 
the fact that people are watching these videos and commenting on these videos and liking these videos of me doing this stuff and basic and all the feedback I'm getting on both Facebook and on the mailing list, um, it's really encouraging and it's really um, motivating me to want to do more of these. So I want to thank everybody who has been um, giving me the positive um, encouragement to do this and to continue to do this. All right, guys, we're done for now. I'm the Original Gamer Steve Stroh. Peace out and bye-bye now.